So James, I want to welcome you to the show. We're going to do a little segment here uh, talking about your new program on National Geographic, Chasing UFOs. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, well, um, for those of us in the UFO community, I myself being uh, one of them, uh, I know that there's going to be uh, you know, some people that feel like I'm sort of selling myself out a little bit, um, but one of the points I really want to make is that this, this is providing a much larger platform um, and uh, raising my profile and also increasing the likelihood of my previous works, uh, which I stand behind, you know, out of the blue, and I didn't know what I saw, the National Press Club event I did in 2007 with Leslie Kane, um, as well as UFOs 50 Years Denial. So um, with all that in mind, uh, I was approached, I think, oh, about a year ago, actually, probably just under a year ago, um, to do a, a TV show. Um, about UFOs for National Geographic, and I thought, hmm, this might be a good opportunity. And I came on board, a lot of research. I think we did several months of research, and I'm sort of giving you the truncated version. And the premise would be is that you have, you know, a scientist such as Ben McGee, um, who is obviously skeptic, a skeptical, you know, what scientists generally are, that we could provide him with, with you know, evidence from possible crash sites, landing sites, photographic, that sort of thing, that he could then take into a lab or do analysis work. And obviously my objective is to provide uh, as much good evidence, you know, photographic, landing case traces, you know, um, potential crash sites, went to a couple crash sites. Um, and then there's Ryder, who's the female, and she's sort of like on the fence with the whole UFO thing, so she's not really... She's, she calls herself the Scaliver. She's very driven, very ambitious, and she wants to believe, and she wants just as much as I do to find the evidence that we can take back to a lab and study. So that's, that's sort of the premise of the show is we go around the world looking for very good cases. And, and most of the cases that, that are in the series, there's eight series episodes right now, um, I pushed for, specifically Mexico and Brazil. There's a case in Brazil that we went to, and, and I really pushed hard because I don't think very many Americans, uh, certainly even in the UFO field, uh, know about the Virginia case, which happened in 1996, which is a couple hours north of Sao Paulo, Brazil. And so I really pushed hard for us to go over there internationally, and uh, it was very, very in impressive results. Um, so there's really, really good cases. We got, you know, Travis Walton. We revisited that case, Fire in the Sky. Oh, really? You did? Interesting. When we, took, we actually took him up to the site because there was some anomalous uh, activity that took place, growth, growth rings in trees uh, in the immediate area where the alleged, you know... Oh, wow. Place. That's fascinating. So you actually went back to the same spot where he was abducted originally. With Travis Walton in 4x4s from the uh, search ah. and teams. It was in the dead of winter. And we actually took tree core samples and we actually recorded what appear to be anomalous tree ring growth, like accelerated tree ring growth right around the time the sighting happened back in 75. Wow, that's fascinating, man. I'll tell you what, I'm really looking forward to seeing that episode. <laughs> what was that and like? That was really cool. You know, it's like we went to the actual crash site in Virginia. We went to the crash site in Roswell, New Mexico. Oh, uh, man. Metal detectors. We took two geologists with us, you know. So there is a really, like, my objective has never changed you know, the platform has with this show, but I think I'm reaching out to a much broader audience. Mm -hmm. We can't pack as much hard uh, stuff in to, like, for instance, my film, I Know What I Saw. It was a bit drier. This is more ex adventure, excitement. You know, we've got real cases, real witnesses, real evidence. But it, at the same time, Nat Geo wants it to be entertaining. They want it to be fun. They want it to be lighthearted, and they want travel scenes and that sort yeah. of thing, which I fully totally understand. Right. You're People right. And I'll tell you what. Entertain. But keeping that in mind, know that I'm a real UFO researcher with real mm -hmm. intentions and doing my darndest to make this as solid and, and fun and entertaining as I can. Yep, and a, lo a lot of people are actually coming to me and they're saying, oh no, James took the, the mainstream way, and I'm thinking in the back of my mind and saying, no, you don't understand, this guy's pretty credible, and him going on the, the, this, the National Geographic Station, that's going to help the UFO research, I believe. That's going to put you more on the map. People that well, are... People need to keep in mind, this show was going on the air with or without me. 
Right, it, right. As simple as that. It was already approved. I actually fought to get on this show because it was already – there was a sizzle shot – uh, with 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 uh, Ben McGee, who's the scientist, mm -hmm. I say he's got more degrees in the thermometer. <laughs> he's <currently laughs> that's, my guy. that's a good he's way of putting it. Not. He's a geologist. He's a radiation specialist. He's an astronomer. I mean, he's he's unbelievable. He's incredible. He's a walking encyclopedia. So Ben is on board, and Ryder was approved for the sizzle. And then later on, I came I came on, and Nat Geo's like, well, we don't really need three people. And the production company is like, well, yeah, I really think it would behoove us to have, mm -hmm. it uh, does. you know, a documentary. Terry and it's, it's done three films on the subject of UFOs, his level of access and expertise, blah blah blah, um, would you know be a good idea. And they weren't sold on it, man. I, it took me like two and a half months, and I had three different auditions, and I had to really sell myself. So this show was going on air with or without my participation, and I can assure those in the UFO field that it's much better that I was part of it. Yeah, you know, thank what? God, James, that you are a part of it. Seriously. <laughs> thank you God. Know, I'm doing my darndest every day. You have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, I, I can going, only oh, imagine. It has to feel like this. <laughs> Listen to me. You know, and I obviously didn't always win the battles. I wish I would have had more, more, you know, uh, more control than post. But they've done a pretty decent job, and it's entertaining. And, and as the show progresses, I've seen a sort of, they're getting the feel of it. They're trying to get the balance of science and, and entertainment and travel and all that stuff and in good cases. And there's a very fine balance there. And I think it's starting to um, mm -hmm. find itself later on in the episodes. But um, but very fun, and I think it'll be I think it'll be great. And if if the show's a success. Um, I'll go around the world exposing the best cases I can get my hands on. That That's great. And you'll be given more resources too, James, and I think that'll really help you out. That's exactly it. You know, I, I've never had the level of support behind me. And give me, I'll, I'll say something else to to some of my supporters, and I really hope that no one feels that um, my intentions have never changed. I can't emphasize that enough. I'm influencing those powers. I have actually have my three previous works circulating headquarters at Nat Geo at Washington, D.C., and they're all starting to really listen to me. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. and, and I'm influencing them, and I've, and I've come up with different ideas. I'm saying, hey, let's try some of this. So I've got my foot in the door now. They're starting to listen. If the show's a success, I can promise you I'll do everything in my power to uh, to expose the best cases in the best light possible. Well, just a couple more questions for you here, James. I, I did want to say that I did get to sit down and watch the first episode. And to anybody out there listening, I I'll tell you what, I was really impressed, man. I think the three of you guys have a lot of chemistry together. I think it blends well. I like the way that, uh, you, like you were saying, the travel scenes. I like adding that in there. Um, you know, the interviews, getting to see behind the scenes like that. And then, oh man, when you guys actually went out in Texas and you were up back in them backfields and people got to understand it, there's more than just the UFOs in there. You're, you're talking boars out in the wilderness. It, it really gets entertaining. It really does. Uh, you know, and that's, and that's what Nat Geo wants, you know, Nat Geo wants it to be fun and light and entertaining, but at the same time, I'm pushing for the best cases, the best witnesses, the best evidence I can get my hands on. I can yep. assure all of you. And I tell you, man, it was like, there was a couple times, like, I got bit, this doesn't make it in the show, but I got bit by a spider in Brazil in oh. the middle of nowhere, and I had two fang marks in my in my arm, and my whole arm went numb, oh, and we didn't know what kind of spider it was, and they took me into the, I had to go to the emergency room in the middle of the Brazilian, like, middle of nowhere, oh, man. get a drip feed and get a huge shot in my rear, and like, all this stuff, you know, we were doing stuff at night, I mean, we went out. crash site at Roswell, we spent like five or six hours with metal detectors, found some cool stuff there. Yeah. You know, in, in Texas, I'm out there, and the locals are packing a gun. They're going, you don't mess around with 400-pound boars. With oh, I know. I know. And you're their babies, and you wish you hadn't. <laughs> One so, thing you know, that... when I'm looking freaked out, I'm out there poking around in the bushes. I'm what? going, this is a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that got me, you said a bad thing. It. You know, like, we continue to have fun with it, and I think that's oh, important yes. for people to understand. It's like, let's create something entertaining with substance. And it's great, and everybody should tune in. I, I love the one part, James, where you're looking, you're like, I know it's right there in the bushes, and I'm telling you, if it comes this way, I'm running my effing ass off. <laughs> 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 and just the way the camera's looking at your face, me and my wife could not stop laughing, man. It was absolutely hilarious. But by the same token, you're out there doing the right thing. You're doing authentic stuff, but there's entertainment involved in, as well. So I, I think it brings diversity to uh, researching the topic. And I, I just wanted to ask you real quick, at the very end of episode one, there was that disc. 
that light disc or whatever that come up over the trees. Amazing. What were your thoughts on that? That was truly inexplicable. That's one of the only things that we captured on camera. Actually, one other night we captured something pretty damn phenomenal, but that was the best that, that Ben, nor myself, nor anybody else that we talked to could explain. Well, James, before I let you go, when, to, when do people actually tune into this? What day is it and what time? It is going to be this Friday, uh, 9 p.m. is what it starts at Pacific Standard Time. And I think it's 9 p.m. Eastern as well, but I'm not positive on that. You have to look. Chasing UFOs, National Geographic Channel. And they're doing two episodes back-to-back um, this Friday night. So two, two days, what, no, a couple days away. Yep. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow night, you're going on Coast to Coast Day with George Norrie, correct? Yes, I am. Yeah. I'm going on with, with George Norrie tomorrow night. And, and listen, if anyone out there is interested in any of my previous works, my website, I know what I saw, or, or if anybody has any cases or evidence they'd like me to review, please, please, please go to my website, I know what I saw, the movie.com. You can contact me there. You can also get some of my previous films. I've got, a, I've got four DVDs. A four pack for sale. I think I'm charging thirty nine dollars, and it's not even uh, no tax and no shipping included. Very good deal. Very good deal. Flat for four discs. And if you have any cases or any evidence or anything information that you want me to know about, please, please, please go to I know what I saw the movie dot com and send me a message. You guys should check respond. out Kexburg. Gotta be patient, but I always respond to everybody. Kexburg UFO, James. I want to know what happened. That's not too far away from me. <laughs> well, you know, Leslie Kane, my former partner and someone I, I work closely with, investigated that case extensively, mm. and they're quite convinced that that something um, from out of this world crashed there. Uh, I'll tell you what, James, I'm really looking forward to this Friday night and, and the rest of the show's coming on. God bless you, man. Uh, keep it real, and nobody's going to look down on you. I think this is good. I like what you're doing. You're getting out there in the main, the main light, and you're going to bring more attention to yourself and the topic. Hey, you know, like I said, my objective never changed. The platform has, and I'm doing my best to keep it real. I always do. All right, I'll, I'll talk to you later, buddy, and good luck tomorrow coast to coast. Thanks so much. Thanks yep. for having me on. Yep, good night. Bye-bye, you too. UFO sightings happen all the time. Now we're chasing down the truth. I've got to get up higher to get a better look. <laughs> I see it. It looks like a plane or no way. It's gotta be extraterrestrial. Whatever it is, it's moving fast. The tin bucket says it's not extraterrestrial. I'll meet you in the desert. Guys, guys, it's moving. What is that? Chasing UFOs premieres Friday, June 29th at 9 on National Geographic.